Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and today I will be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. I'm super excited to do this tag. I saw it all over booktube last year. I've already seen a couple this year and so I wanted to make sure to go ahead and film mine and get it up. Before I get into it, I'm still talking about it. We all should still be talking about it. Black Lives Matter, they always have. I will still have resources linked in the description box to donate, sign petitions, protest, support however you can, and so please check those out if you are able to. I saw someone else say this in their video, I can't remember who, but if you have time to watch this video, you have time to click on that link and do something to support the movement. But other than that, I don't have too much of a preamble today, so I will go ahead and get into the questions. So the first question is the best book you've read so far in 2020, and this was hard right off the bat. I haven't really thought about uh, my favorite book so far, but I think that one that stands out as soon as I read it that I know will be one of my top favorites for a long time to come is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This is a book that came out a couple of years ago in 2018 and I saw it raved about and I knew it was historical fiction kind of literary fiction type of a book and so I was definitely intimidated by it. I did not know if it would be easily readable or if it would be my kind of book. I decided to try it out and I surprised myself by absolutely loving it. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. It is a historical fiction book about this girl named Kaya who lives out in the marsh kind of on her own. She's raised herself. She's not formally educated so I will say that when you start this book her English and her family's English is not very good and so it's hard to read uh, but it does get better so definitely push through the first you know 20-ish pages if that's something that's turning you off from it because I think the rest of the book is just beautiful and has to do a lot with nature, which is not something that I'm passionate about. I'm definitely an indoorsy person, not an outdoorsy person, but somehow this book still got me to appreciate nature, and that's pretty incredible. And this main character is incredible. I love her. There's a little bit of a mystery aspect in this book, and as a mystery thriller lover, you would think that that might be my favorite part of the book, but it's actually not. I didn't even think it was really necessary, but if that is intriguing to you as a reason to pick it up, um, I thought I would mention it. Definitely one of my top favorites so far this year. It's something that I definitely think about often. I can remember the story really well, and I was intimidated for a while, so if you're intimidated by it, and that's the reason you haven't picked it up yet, I would say to uh, go ahead and give it a go. Second question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2020, and I do not read series very often. I definitely prefer standalone books. There are very few series that I have read and so I think I only had like two options for this question and it's technically not a sequel, it's technically book three, but I'm gonna go with The Toll by Neil Schusterman. This is the third and final book in the Ark of a Scythe series. Scythe is very popular on booktube so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but it's basically this dystopian world where humans have conquered death. The only way to die is if you get gleaned by a scythe, which is a person who goes through rigorous training to learn how to kill people, how to decide who gets killed, and we're following these two scythe apprentices as they learn how to do what a scythe does. And so this is the third book in a series, so I really can't say anything about it. Um, I thought it was a good conclusion. I've seen mixed reviews from people. It is a chunky book and so there's a lot in here, very dense, some confusing timelines, but I thought that it was a logical wrap-up and I was satisfied where all of the characters ended up. I enjoyed some of the new characters we met and that we followed. I think it's hard to introduce new characters late in a series, but I think this one did it well and I did end up caring about those characters. So the best sequel so far is The Toll and I think I rated it four stars. Question number three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to, and one that I'm so excited to read is Beach Read by Emily Henry. I was actually sent this book by Sydney at Sid Bookworm. She is a fellow new booktuber as of the last few months, and she's wonderful. If you have not seen her videos, I will link her. She is so sweet, just a little ray of sunshine, um, and I sent her something for Happy Pride Month, and she sent me back a book in return, and I think we're going to end up buddy reading this in the next couple of months. I don't know exactly when, but this is a romance book. From what I hear, it's a little bit deeper and a little bit more complex than just your standard light fluffy romance, which is good. Um, that's something I really like in romances is when they are deeper and more emotional and have a little bit more invested in them than just like a meet cute situation. So I'm very excited to read this and I have seen glowing reviews as I'm sure you have seen also all over the book internet. 
Question four is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I have to say that mine is One by One by Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware is a an author of mystery thrillers and she's written a good number of books so far. I think I've read like three of her thrillers so far and her most recent one, The Turn of the Key, is my favorite of hers so far. So I'm very excited to see what she puts out next. One by One sounds like it's like a corporate retreat up in the mountains and maybe like an avalanche happens or something where all of these people are trapped together and I think someone turns up dead. So it's somewhat of a standard, you know, whodunit murder mystery and I think it sounds great. I am so, so excited to eventually get my hands on it. Question five is your biggest disappointment so far this year and I'm a little sad to be putting this one up but it is Middle Game by Shannon McGuire. This is another very hyped book here on booktube. Books and Lala is one of my favorite booktubers and she I think put this as her favorite book of all of last year. It's like a science fiction type book. Uh, it follows these two twins named Roger and Dodger and they have some special abilities both as twins but just separately they have their own um, skill sets and they're not quite human. Um, we're kind of figuring out what they are and we follow them from when they're children all the way up to when they're young adults. It just sounded a lot more intriguing to me than it ended up being. I thought it was very slow moving. I thought that some parts of the book, the parts that didn't follow Roger and Dodger were boring and convoluted and confusing and I just didn't enjoy my reading experience with this one. I tried it on audio as well as reading it physically. It just wasn't my favorite and I thought I would love it which was really disappointing especially because I love sci-fi books. So biggest disappointment this year so far. Question six is your biggest surprise and I'm gonna go with a thriller called What Lies Between Us by John Mars. I've heard some things about John Mars. I haven't read any other books by him but I've heard that his other books are great too. Um, I had no idea what to expect when going into this book. I got it on NetGalley. I was kind of going into it expecting it to probably be like any other average thriller that I read but it was fantastic. Um, I made a video of my top 10 favorite thrillers and I've had that list of my top 10 kind of nailed down for a while and at this point I think it's kind of hard for new thrillers to break into that list just because for thrillers to be great I think they have to be surprising and new and original to you and there are only so many twists I think that can really happen in books and so it's always a real treat when you do read a thriller and it just blows your socks off and surprises you and this one totally did that. It is very fast paced, it's very twisty, I think it was super smartly crafted. I don't even want to tell you really what it's about because it is a new book and I'm very excited to eventually see people start talking about it because I haven't heard anybody talk about it yet. Uh, but it's so good and it reminds me a lot of the book Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris if you've read that. So it totally surprised me and I'm really happy and excited to recommend it to everybody who loves thrillers. Question number seven is your favorite new author so far this year which can either be a debut author or just a new to you author. I'm gonna go with a new to me author and that is Elizabeth Acevedo. She is the writer of The Poet X and With the Fire on High and her newest release is Clap When You Land and within the last two months I've read all three of those books and loved them all. The Poet X, her first book, I actually gave the lowest rating, three stars, even though that's maybe her most acclaimed book so far. But I think having read it last out of all of her three uh, kind of did me a disservice because I had read her most recent books and I just think they're have gotten better and better. And so her second book, With the Fire on High, is probably my favorite out of the three. I gave that an easy five stars. I raved about it in my April wrap up, which I just, or in my May wrap up which was up last week which I will link and then her most recent book Clap When You Land I listened to on Scribd just recently as well and that is also great. Um, Elizabeth Acevedo writes very complex and mature characters even though they are young adults. I think that they read and they act like adults and I just really enjoy that. I enjoy like the cultural racial dynamics she throws into her books so I really appreciate uh, all of those books and Elizabeth Acevedo as a writer I will absolutely be tuning in for what Whatever she puts out in the future. Question number eight is your newest fictional crush and this was kind of a hard one. I don't really have fictional crushes uh, very often but I'm gonna say The Husband in All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. This is a romance and like I said earlier I really need for romances to be deeper and more emotional and this is definitely that. This follows a married couple who are something like seven years into their marriage and they're starting to have 
um, issues and the spark just isn't there like it was when they first met and we see this story in two timelines we get them when they did first meet and now seven years into the future so you get that juxtaposition of early on in their relationship when everything was perfect and now when everything is kind of falling apart and the man in this story is wonderful I mean he is a human and he has his flaws and we definitely see that in um, you know the present day story because neither of them are innocent neither of them are putting in the effort that um, you kind of have to put in to make a marriage work but how the story ends and what he does at the end of the book just uh, gets to my heart and I'm married I have a wonderful husband and I don't expect to have you know marital problems like this couple does in the future but if so uh, how this guy acts right at the very end is how I would hope my husband would act when our marriage is on the rocks and so I'm gonna say that this guy Graham is my newest fictional crush. Question number nine is your newest favorite character and this is one that I am super excited to talk about. I recently read the book Slay by Brittany Morris. I listened to it on audio and it was such a good audiobook. This is about a teenager named Kira who developed and now runs her own online virtual reality video game and it's by her a black woman for black people to really immerse themselves into black culture and to have a safe space where they can go and just play without getting slurs thrown out them and without being judged or treated differently because of their race it's just a safe place for them to play a video game um and this main character kira is so great i mean the fact that she has programmed developed um and runs and oversees this video game which has become you know big in this story is so impressive I absolutely love coding females that's amazing she's also mature she faces some backlash for the game in this book and I think she handles it well I just absolutely loved her in the story she's definitely my newest favorite character um, I would say that this book Definitely, I mean, you can't not make the comparison to Ready Player One, and I gave Ready Player One, I think, five stars when I read it several years ago. I didn't know if anything really could beat it, especially for a video game book, or a book about a video game, but this one totally blew it out of the water. Highly recommend this one. If you liked Ready Player One, even if you didn't like Ready Player One, but you think you could like a book similar to that, but better, uh, try this one out. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry, and here's the thing, I don't cry for books. Uh, <laughs> I cry a lot in real life otherwise um, and sometimes for like TV shows and movies and stuff but I really don't cry for books so I don't have a great answer for this. I am gonna say that one that got close is Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier which might sound weird because that's a thriller but how this book starts is this woman is at like an outdoor market or something with her five-year-old son and the son ends up getting taken from her and the rest of the book is kind of following her trying to get her son back and dealing with that and that scene is really hard to read um, I have a daughter and you know it's any parent's worst nightmare to not only have your kid kidnapped but to have them kidnapped when you are right there watching them and having their hand literally slip out of your hand. Um, that's terrifying and heartbreaking and I don't know, I don't think I actually cried reading that scene but it definitely hit me and was very very hard to read. Question number 11 on the other hand is a book that made you happy and I'm gonna say The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Um, this is a movie that I know very well and I did not know that it was actually a book series until I was at a library sale one day and the first four books were for sale for like a dollar each so I decided to pick them up and I read the entire series for a vlog which is on my channel but it was really fun and nostalgic to read this. I don't think it's anything that I would necessarily recommend to you if you haven't already been exposed to the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants story in one way or another. I don't think it is something that I would recommend to like teenagers or young adults these days. I don't think it's that great of a book, but if it's something that you've seen the movie and you love these characters already, um, the book was really fun to read and it made me happy. Next book, or next question, is the most beautiful book that you've bought or received this year. And, I mean, there are a bunch of them, but I'm going to go with The Gracier by Kim Liggett. This is a dystopian book about this society where girls are taken 
the year they turn 16 and they're basically removed from society and forced to go through that 16th year apart from their families and loved ones. And that's because they believe that 16 year old girls develop magic and putting them out for their grace year will allow them to dispel the magic um, and come back as normal women. It sounded very intriguing. This cover is gorgeous, I think. I don't have a ton of pink books on my shelves, um, so this is a really fun and pretty one to display. And the last question, question 13, uh, is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Um, great question. I don't usually plan out like what I'm gonna read the whole year. I don't even do formal monthly TBRs um, because I kind of change things up as I go. I end up, you know, picking books up from the library or picking them up on audio, kind of on a whim. But some that I have on my shelves already that I know I want to get to, I have two uh, other Colleen Hoover books. So I have It Ends With Us, which I believe is just a standard romance. I think that Colleen Hoover just in general writes deeper, more emotional romances, so I'm definitely excited to get to this one. And then Too Late is, I think, more of like a thriller romance or just a darker romance or darker contemporary book in general. I really don't know much about this at all. I'm hoping to get to it this month. I also have two Megan Miranda books that I want to read. Megan Miranda is a thriller writer. All of her books that I've read so far have been averagely good. I think they've all been like three or four stars. I don't think any of them have really been new favorites for me, but I'm definitely willing to give more a try. I have Fragments of the Loss, which Lala is reading uh, this month or last month for her Literally Dead book club, which I participate in every month. And then I have All the Missing Girls, which is one of Megan Miranda's earliest, if not her very first thriller. And from a lot of people, I hear that this is her best. Um, all I know about it is that I think it's told in like reverse chronological order. So I'm really interested to see how that plays out in the thriller because I don't think I've read one like that before. And Fragments of the Lost, I really know absolutely nothing about what the plot is actually about. And then lastly, I have two Ruth Ware books that I want to get to. So as I mentioned, Ruth Ware is a thriller author um, who I've enjoyed a couple of her books, and she has one coming out later this year. But before that one comes out, I think I want to read these two, which will complete uh, her backlist for me. Then I will have read all of her books up to this point. I have no idea what either of them are about. I haven't necessarily seen great reviews for either of them, but I'm willing to give them a fair shot and to see if I enjoy them. So that is all the questions for my mid-year book freakout tag. I'm very excited to get to the rest of the year. Um, my reading year so far has been really, really good. I don't know exactly how many books I've read so far. I think it's something around 50. Um, and my goal for the end of the year is 110. And I definitely think I'm going to hit it. I am very excited about lots of books and videos that I have planned. This tag is definitely open for anyone to participate in. I'm not tagging anybody specifically, uh, but if you see this and you want to make one, go ahead and do that. I will have all of the questions down below. So with that, I don't have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.